One of the great things about life is that you get to meet a lot of great people and you get to know them. I'm very grateful for the people that God has put into my life over the years. There are a lot of people from all walks of life, every phase of life that I have met and called friends. Believe it or not, I've even had the privilege of being around people who are extremely talented. I know many of you who know me are thinking I'm talking about you at this point, aren't you? Unfortunately, some of you would even think, oh, he's not talking about me. How do you know I'm not? Many of those talented people are so talented that they've risen to the top of their profession or their field because of their talents and abilities. Here's an interesting phenomenon I've discovered. I have found that it's harder for believers sometimes to deal with their success than it is for them to deal with their failure. That's right. Sometimes success can be tougher on a believer than failure. Because when a believer fails, at least when he's at the bottom, he can tell himself he's being spiritual and humble. Uh, at least that's what I tell myself when I fail. However, what do you say? And how do you act when you are very good or very successful at something? That's the question I want you to think about today. Most people tend to react to success in one of two ways. Either they become self-inflated with pride and they believe they're better than everybody else. And this inflated sense of self-worth makes them feel superior to other people, and they become demanding and condescending toward other people. On the other hand, and this is what happens, I believe, to serious believers more than anybody else, they exhibit what I call a sense of false humility. Here's how that goes. When somebody comes up to them and compliments them, they'll say things like this. Well, it was nothing. Oh, it's no big deal. Or Anybody can do that. And they can come up with all kinds of things to say to deflect attention away from themselves for fear that they might be prideful. And they think that's humility. Well, both of those responses are inadequate or inaccurate. So let's set the record straight, okay? Get this. Everybody's good at something. Seriously, all of us are good at something. Here's the second truth I want you to learn. None of us, and I mean none of us, is good at everything. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but you are not good at everything. We like to say around here that everybody is a 10 in something. But nobody is a 10 in everything. Now, if you think you're a 10 in everything, you got a serious pride issue. Is it okay, though, for a believer to admit that he's good, if not very good, at something? Well, of course it is. Is it being prideful to acknowledge that you're very good, maybe even great at something? No, it's not. It's, you know what the word is for that? It's being honest and observant. To say you're not good at something when you know and everybody else knows that you're very good at it is this thing I call false humility. Uh, It it could even be called lying or deception, maybe self-deception. The truth is this. God gives us talents and God gives us abilities. Some people are born, for example, with an innate ability to sing. Other people, for example, can jump extremely high or run extremely fast. Not everybody is born with the same level of IQ. Some people, for example, have a mind that works mathematically, almost like a calculator. Other people have a mind that breaks things down logistically or into logical sequences. I I could go on with examples forever. Like Some people are born with a personality that is very adept at winning people over. But my point is this. These are all natural born gifts. We could go so far as to say that they're God-given abilities. That's right. 
God gives you your unique DNA. It's a part of your shape or your unique design. To admit that you're talented or very good in a specific area is not being prideful, it's being observant. Here's what scripture says in Deuteronomy 8, 18. It says, remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful. There it is. The ability, the power, the talent, the gift that you have to be good at what you do comes from God. Actually, the scripture says that God has given us gifts for a very distinct purpose, to serve him and to serve other people. And we're actually taught that we're to be accountable to God for how we use those gifts. Peter wrote it like this in 1 Peter 4.10. He says, each of you as a good manager must use the gift that God has given you to serve others. That's why God has made you good at that so that you'd have a platform to serve others. So it is not sinful to acknowledge that you have abilities and are very good at them. But it is sinful to misuse those abilities. If God has given you a special ability, then you're accountable to God to maximize it. For example, if I'm very good at something, I can't be satisfied with mediocrity. If God has gifted me, then in that area, God has called me to excel. And not to excel is a sin because I've not honored God. Now, if I'm not gifted in an area, then I can acknowledge that I'm not good at that without feeling inferior. What's this? If I'm gifted in an area, I can acknowledge that without being prideful. A truly spiritual person can just be honest about both his strengths and his weaknesses. Here's my favorite definition of humility. Humility is an honest assessment of who God has made me to be. Pride would be an inflated sense of who I am in a particular area or that I do it without God. So if I'm weak in a particular area, then I need other people in my life that are strong in that area. If I'm talented in an area, then I need to be held accountable for that talent that I don't waste it or that I'm not satisfied. I can't lose my hunger or my drive to perfect that gifting God has given me. I have to build on that gift for the glory of God. We only have a little bit of time here, so let me just give you some observations that we need to note about success. Here's one. Success comes from God and can be taken away just as easily. 1 Samuel 2, 7 says, The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. I remember Paul said, I have learned to be content with a lot and with little. Whatever situation I find myself in. Second principle. We're accountable for how we use our success. If you become successful because of a talent or ability or a gift God has given you, then he hasn't made you successful so you can be comfortable or happy. Now, it's not wrong to be comfortable. It's not wrong to be happy. Of course not. But he didn't give me that just for my pleasure. I am to use my success to do two things, serve God and serve people. Third principle. I can acknowledge my success and deflect the glory to God. One great Christian lady, Corey D- Ten Boom, once said, Whenever I'm complimented, I simply say thank you. Then I turn the compliment into a rose, and I lay that rose at the feet of Jesus. She said, The neatest thing about this is, if I don't keep the compliments, I don't have to keep the criticisms either. Isn't that free? Here's the fourth principle. We should never be confused that we're better than anyone else because we're very good in one area. If I'm gifted in an area that somebody else is not gifted in, it doesn't mean that I'm better than them or I have greater value than they have. Uh, Because there's somebody else who's better and more gifted in an area where I'm weak. That also doesn't mean I'm inferior to them. 
We're not better. We're not worse. We're just gifted differently. Fifth principle. Pride is when we think we're better or above others because we have a particular ability. Pride is when I don't acknowledge that it's God who gives us our gifts and talents. Here's a great thought for you to have today. I am accountable to God for the abilities he's given me. Here's a great prayer to pray today. God help me not to have an inflated view of myself, but to know I am who you created me to be. Help me to use what you've given me for your glory and the betterment of others. May God bless you today and may you use what he's given you for his glory.